Is hound judge then jury? No, minister, rule of law. I'm not here. Thanks a lot. I've just run out and I was dying for a cup of tea. No one seemed to be in but you. Aye, dirty stuff outs in this road. It's hot. You know very well it is, Mr. Ledrick. I've not just asked you if you like it, Paul. Hang on. Mind you, it'll be strong enough to stand a spoon up in. I'll bring you some through if you like, Mr. Ledrick. No, it doesn't matter. You've got enough to do. Oh, I'm all behind, Anne, since I took time off of her sister's wedding. Her second. She's a widow like. Her first. Oh, he enjoyed poor Elf, if ever a man did. What was wrong with him? It'd be easier to say what wasn't wrong with him. It's her second in better shape. He makes the first look like Superman. Wonder he lasted through the ceremony. It's the maternal instinct. Always a great one for looking after people, our Edna. There aren't many like her. You can say that again. Where's the way? New York. Concord. It's Munich next week. Half the men in this part of the world are never home. It only leads to trouble. All men are the same, Joan. Oh, no, Mrs. Kelvin, and my brother-in-law now, he's in no shape for getting into trouble. Reckon my sister will have to carry him across the threshold. Oh, hello, Vicky. I just popped in to borrow some milk. How's Bruce? In New York. Does a lot of travelling these days. Clive's given that up, rather. Too much to do here. You should count your blessings. It's getting late. W would you like to stay and have a drink? Another time, love. I'll see you to your door. Entertain your customers lavishly. Ah, but wait. Daddy's late. Mm, he's entertaining a customer. Seems to do a lot of that lately. Well, he's very good at selling and wool's a very competitive business. Are you going to London again? I'm busy with the play, darling. Why do you ask? Oh, just a casual query. You don't want this on, do you? I'm easy. Daddy doesn't seem to be so cheerful these days. Doesn't he? He's been talking about export processing. He's rather vexed about it. Export processing? Hmm. Continentals have cloth processed cheap in places like Hong Kong. Then they undercut us. Well, I suppose Daddy will do something about it. Yes. Daddy always does do something about it. 
have quite a lot, don't we? Well, I suppose we have more than most people, but then Daddy works daddy? hard. Daddy? Why do you think of him as Daddy? It's my Daddy, not yours. I'm not enjoying this conversation. We don't have many, do we? We did once. Hello, my dear. Home is the sailor, home from the sea. Hello, love. And the hunter, home from the hill. A very fraught atmosphere. What's up? Oh, nothing. We were just talking about overseas processing. Oh, my God, don't talk to me about that. Give me answers. One law for the blood. Bloody continentals. And another for us. Clive, are you all right? Yes, it's okay. It's nothing. It's just something I ate. Rehearsals go all right? Oh, well, I suppose they're shaping up. Norman and Malcolm keep on having fits of temperament. In fact, the whole cast is very odd. Well, it'd be a dull world if we were all the same, wouldn't it? You should act too, Daddy. Oh, no, not for me, darling. Too much like hard work. You'd be very good at it. Nearly as good as Mummy. Good night. Good night, Princess. What the hell was all that about? It's about her being very young and depending on us. We're on a knife edge, aren't we, Clive? Who isn't? We're not the only ones, you know. You know, when I was very young, my parents were always there. I used to think they were rather dull sometimes. They didn't look young for their age. They were... They were middle-aged. Settled. Doesn't sound like much fun for them. No. But it was fine for me. I say, Mabel. What old thing? Are you game for a bet? Oh, what fun! Fire ahead. Bet you half a crown I can kiss you without touching you. Oh, jolly good, Bertie. You're on. You touched me, Bertie. Yes, and it was well worth half a crown. <laughs> oh, you are a naughty boy. Oh, you are a ripping girl. I never know what you'll do next. You know, I'm... I'm just an ordinary chap. But somehow, when I'm with you... When I'm with you, I... Yes, Bertie. You'll think it awful, Cheek. Oh, you are O.T. Mustard, you are. A girl's really not safe with you, and I thought we were pals. No sloppy nonsense about that. And you can see the final part of Stay With Me Till Morning next Friday night at 9 o'clock. Sunday on ITV, a big film and a new series. If the marriage is no good, either of us says, the hell with the marriage. Okay, $10 million for every year we stay together. And if we're still married and I die, $100 million. Welcome to my life. Hello, Mother. 
Nico. <laughs> You know, Hitler is the only man I've ever really hated, Jimmy. And here is the paper which bears his name upon it as well as mine. The British people should know that we have suffered a defeat without a war. Just two programs to enjoy, Sunday on ITV. And a reminder that also on Sunday night, Benson will be keeping the peace at the Governor's Mansion. This week, Katie has to write a school essay and decides that she's living with the ideal subjects. Benson on Sunday at 7.15. But back to tonight, where next we go over to the studios of ITN for News at 10. He usually visits every week. It's not like Busby to forget. Oh, I know. Yeah. He always was a bit careless. Perhaps he couldn't care less. He's typically mm. young today. You try and bring him up proper. Oh, I know. Good for nothing, Lil. Sudden strong household smells can materialize at any time. On the left, a conventional spray air freshener. Whilst on the right, twice as fresh, a special kind of air freshener. Just wave it through the air and it kills off strong smells just like any spray. But it doesn't stop there, because left open, Twice as fresh will keep on working for eight weeks to freshen the air and deal with lingering smells. Twice as fresh. The solid air freshener that works like a spray. You want fresh coffee flavor and what happens? The aroma's so tempting, then it bites. It's that trace of bitterness. So try Fine Blend Instant Coffee from Nescafe. They slow roast the fine blend beans. It gives you all that aroma and fresh coffee flavor without bite. If your coffee bites, try Fine Blend. Fresh coffee flavor that doesn't bite. Queensway's Big Q Sale extended for one week only to make way for new ranges. Special end of sale reductions. Half price offers on lounge suites, beds, bedroom furniture, carpets and dining furniture. Free fitting on massive carpet stocks. Queensway's Big Q Sale extended for one week only. Shop electric, get a good, good deal at your electricity board shop. With the choice of cookers with a lot of appeal at your electricity shop. Good, good prices, good, good service, good, good trade-ins too. You'll find a good, good deal that's right for you. Shop electric, get a good, good deal at your electricity board shop. After an exhausting day, the last thing I want is the effort of squeezing fresh oranges. Happily, thanks to those lovely people at St Ival, I don't have to, because St Ival Real contains nothing but the juice of around 15 delicious oranges. So all the taste of fresh juice without the effort of squeezing. I'm still left with the effort of pouring it out, but I think I can just about cope with that. Sure. St Ival Real. The juice, the whole juice, and nothing but the juice. If you're handy with your hands but don't know what to make, here's a brand new magazine. Busy needles, busy needles, how to do it, what to make, and help at every stage. Half in squares that don't look square, I swear I never knew. All the things an Afghan square can do. Busy needles, busy needles, oh, good idea. HZ, it's learning without tears. A golden opportunity for investors looking for extra interest with only three months withdrawal notice. From the Chelsea, who else? When I think of the sacrifices... Hello, how's the best mum in the world today? Busby! Oh, you are a good boy! This is London Weekend Television, broadcasting from our studios on the South Bank. The time is 10 o'clock as we go over now to ITN for News at 10 with Sandy Gore and Selena Scott.
Chief Constable in row with riot inquiry and own committee. A fourth IRA hunger striker comes off his fast. Healy says he will beat Ben for the deputy leadership. Soviet Union begins massive manoeuvres near Poland. Princess Margaret meets the King with a hundred wives. Good evening. The Chief Constable of Greater Manchester, Mr James Anderton, is involved in a bitter row with his own police committee over his refusal to give evidence to the independent inquiry into the Moss Side riots. Mr Anderton said it was ridiculous to expect a Chief Constable to submit himself to an inquiry without any powers and to have to answer questions from, as he put it, any Tom, Dick or Harry. The committee of mainly local councillors said in that case Mr Anderton couldn't present his own written report on the disturbances to their meeting this afternoon, to which Mr Anderton replied that he was being gagged. John Toker of Granada Television reports. The inquiry heard from over 100 witnesses and some admitted taking part in the riots. Many witnesses were critical of police methods, but the Chief Constable refused to give evidence in person. He told the Chairman, Ben Heitner QC, it is plainly ridiculous to expect a chief constable or other senior officer to submit himself to a powerless non-statutory tribunal of inquiry to answer questions based largely on the statements of any single Tom, Dick or Harry. The chief constable, who toured Moss Side with the Home Secretary shortly after the riots, has written two reports, one for the Scarman inquiry and the other for his own councillors. In that report, he claims some West Indian youths assumed a right to commit crime on the grounds of their culture and professed black heritage. Mr Anderton wanted to talk, but his councillors refused to listen. Every chief constable has a duty under law to report to his police authority. I saw today, quite properly, an opportunity on the very first occasion that I've had to disclose to the police authority many of the issues which have recently troubled the public. I was uh, able today, had I been given an opportunity, to allay many of the public fears and restore public confidence in the police. Because I was denied that opportunity, I can only conclude that the effect was that I was gagged. Uh, what he's complaining of is the possibility of being questioned by us on statements we've taken from any Tom, Dick or Harry. And in saying that, he does us less than justice. We're a little more intelligent than to put questions of that sort to him. It's perfectly true that among the hundred or so witnesses we've heard, some could be described as any Tom, Dick or Harry, but that doesn't mean we're going to believe them. And among the witnesses are many who couldn't be described in that way at all. Another H-block hunger striker has ended his protest. Matt Devlin is receiving medical treatment after 52 days without food. His mother and brother asked doctors to intervene after his condition deteriorated suddenly. Devlin is serving seven years for attempted murder. He's the fourth hunger striker to end his protest. Patrick Quinn and Patrick McGowan also received treatment when their families intervened, and they've continued to take food. The first man to end his fast, Brendan McLaughlin, was given treatment after developing a stomach ulcer. He, too, is still taking food. Meanwhile, Northern Ireland police have warned of a new IRA bombing campaign. They've told drivers there'll be strict enforcement of the law about unattended parking in controlled zones. And an inquiry into the breakout of eight provisional IRA men from Crumlin Road Jail in Belfast has blamed a security lapse and human error. But it doesn't put any blame on individuals. Mr Dennis Healy has said he will beat Mr Tony Benn for Labour's deputy leadership and he said that if he did win, it would prove that the tide in the Labour Party isn't running to the left. Tonight, Mr Benn predicted a landslide victory for Labour at the next election if they stuck to party policies. But the former Prime Minister, Sir Harold Wilson, warned that Labour was tearing itself apart over the deputy leadership and, at this rate, wouldn't even be the main opposition party after an election. Both Mr Healy and Mr Benn were firmly on the campaign trail today, Mr Benn addressing his first public meeting since his three-month absence and Mr Healy expressing his confidence that he will end up the winner when the party's electoral college casts its votes at the party conference. Mr Benn predicted to a packed meeting at Bridge End that the campaign for democracy and socialism in the Labour Party was giving hope to millions. The Prime Minister, the Cabinet and their business allies, he said, were beginning to panic because they now realised Labour could win a landslide victory at the next election. Mr Benn, who was loudly applauded, argued fiercely at the meeting at Bridge End against what he called nuclear warmongering, and in particular attacked the government over its attitude on defence. And what I say to you is being deceived 
into accepting a military build-up for quite a different purpose. For what this government is doing is what every bankrupt government has done throughout history. Find a foreign enemy to take your mind off what's going wrong at home. Now that is my honest belief. And, uh, I say... I say this about the Russians, and I'm no supporter of the Soviet system, and neither is anybody in the Labour Party. But I remember 1941 again, when Rudolf Hess came to Britain on behalf of the Germans and tried to persuade Churchill to join with Hitler to destroy Russia. And to his eternal credit, Churchill wouldn't do it. And the Russians fought alone against those German armies before the Americans were in the war, before Pearl Harbor, and 25 million Russians died in the war. And I shall never forget till the day I die that the liberties we enjoy were bought with Russian blood that gave us time to organize in order to beat them. And uh, I will... I will not be a party to a propaganda exercise to tell my children that they have the inevitability of a nuclear war with the Soviet Union. I do not believe any nation wants war. And I might add something else. If the Russians can't control the Poles, what chance have they of moving in and controlling the West Germans or the French or the English or the Welsh or the Scots or the Irish uh, with their uh, policies? Mr Healy and his supporters, meanwhile, strongly deny that the campaign is moving away from them and towards Mr Benn. They say they're still confident he has enough support to win. Mr Healy, as the party's spokesman on foreign affairs, this afternoon he had a meeting with the Angolan ambassador, is in a difficult position over party policy on issues like defence and the common market.